if you have the book, you'll see that this is uh, valuable to kind of go in a certain process. And I'm going to do a version of it in the lecture, right? And I'm going to record it all so you'll be able to do it there without the book. But here's what we're going to need to do. Uh, a starting point with a, with a file right here. We have this folder on the desktop. Minimize everything. Let's go to the desktop. And the, the, the lessons of the book are provided for you right here. If you open up this web design folder, this is a folder where I'm going to be able to pass you files. But be careful because this is, um, this is unlocked, meaning that if you make a change to a file, you just made a change to everyone's file. So you're going to need to copy, you're going to need to make a copy for yourself. So open up web design folder, and now look at that, we have a class CIS 125. That's our class right here, right? So double click CIS 125, and then there's lesson one. You're going to copy that folder. Don't just open it up and double click it. Copy that lesson one to your flash drive or to the desktop at least. You need your own copy, so don't just open it up and start working on it. Copy it over. If you get that message, just say OK. Copy it to the desktop, and then when you copy it out of the out of our network folder, close this folder. You need a copy for yourself. Don't just double click it in the folder because that's going to affect it for everyone else. Once you copied it to yourself, your desktop, your flash drive, whatever, close that window, and then you have your copy. Then change the name of it to put your last name into the copy. Lesson one, your last name. Obviously, not Smith, unless your last name is Smith, but change it to be lesson one, your last name. Now, obviously, you're doing this in your copy, not in the network folder. Uh, you can uh, right click it, and then we've got rename. So let's rename that folder to put your last name onto it. Okay, so if you open that folder, we have a start result folder. And inside of that folder, we have a few images. So a moment ago, we were drawing original things. Sometimes you'll need to import things from other software, either photos or other drawings or whatever. So we're going to do a lesson where we're going to get back into Adobe Animate. We're going to import these graphics and also talk about um, uh, the timeline more in detail to make a slideshow. Because what we drew a moment ago was only one thing with no animation. And with multiple things, we can make an animation with multiple frames. If you've been reading some of the content on Canvas, we're starting to use some keywords. Frames, keyframes and more that we will get accustomed to. So everyone have that uh, lesson one copy folder? Good. OK, let's get back to Adobe Animate. Close your masterpiece, and let's make a brand new file. So save what you drew and go back to File New. And we're going to do the same thing from last time, where we go to the Advanced tab and the HTML5 Canvas tab. and these. Defaults are fine. Now, if you play games, frame rate is something you hear about, or FPS, frame rate. Our current project is 24 FPS. Question? Our current project is 24 FPS. And we can change this to be a variety of settings, and we'll understand what all that means soon enough. But for this project, just go ahead and click Create Advanced HTML5 Canvas. And let's save this. Let's save this into that folder that you copied, that Lesson 1 folder that you copied. We have a, uh, we have a Start folder. Let's create a new folder in there called 01 End. So the lessons of the book often have a have a start folder with maybe pieces of things that it gives you and then you're going to end up with your version 
So within the lesson one, your copy of lesson one, you're going to create a zero to end folder. And then the file can be called lesson one with your last name. So go ahead and save that. So we're saving lesson one. FLA file, so the type of file here, FLA, and that's left over from the old name <coughs> of Adobe Animated, it used to be called Adobe Flash. They've made it more advanced, much better than before. It's called Adobe Animate now, but it still has that old sort of dot .fla, and that's normal. So save your FLA file, and we have this. So when you go through the readings in Canvas, you will see this terminology again. But right now what we've got here is the stage. This main like piece of paper to work on, that's the stage. And then we've got all of these panels on the side over here, and tools. We've got the timeline panel. So basically all the stuff on the right side here are panels. That's a panel. This is the tools panel. And at the very at the top, we have you know the application menu and such. So up on the application menu, go to File, Import, to Library. So this FLA file will contain all your drawings, all your sound, all your animation, all your photos, all your code. Eventually we're also going to talk about code. This software will let you write code so that when you press a button, something happens. When you press the keyboard arrow, your little character moves to the left. Well, that happens via code. So eventually we'll talk about code. And all of that stuff is saved in your project. And one place to see some of that stuff is in the library. So let's go to File, Import Library. And I want to import those images that come in the 01 start folder. So wherever you put your your project folder, your lesson one, mine's on the desktop, inside of lesson one, inside of start, we have a background and more. Let's start with the background. So click background, open. And that brings in an external graphic or asset into this project. So we'll start with the background. And it's in, the, it's in the project. It's right there. Can you see it? No, because you have to look in the library. We have a library panel, and we have a graphic in the library. So let's do that. On the top right corner, you have this property panel, and next to it is library panel, and we have one item there, the background that I just imported. Go ahead and import the three other graphics. Go back to File, Import to Library, and select the next graphic so that they're all imported into this project. Go ahead and do that for practice. File, Import to Library. Go to Photo 1. Go to Photo 1. It's in there. I have the background, Photo 1. I have Photo 2, Photo 3. If only there was some advanced hacker shortcut to select more than one photo at a time. Just select them all, exactly. So you can do them one at a time, or select multiple ones. Put them all into your library of your project. Okay, so I got a background, a photo one, photo two, photo three. Let's say, actually, I don't need photo three. How do you think you remove it from your project? There's a little trash can down here. Don't delete it. But we have a trash can here. So importing into the library. It's up on the file menu. Removing from your library, removing from your project is a little trash can. And we'll look at these other icons a little bit later. You can also create something inside of it. What's a symbol? We'll get to that. But right now, you just need to know that you can delete from the library, or you can import to the library. Okay, I'm going to save that. Control S. 
I want to set the background graphic as the background of my slideshow. The purpose of lesson one is to make a slideshow. It'll show one picture, then another picture, then another picture, maybe a cool animation, something. And the first assignment will be related to that. You might have already seen it on Canvas, that you need to make a slideshow. Well, that's what this lesson is. So to add an element from the library to the stage, you just drag it and drop it. So drag your background PNG file, drop it into the layer one. It's huge. It's huge because you might see there was the areas of the stage, and then this graphic is larger than the stage. So there's a couple of things we could do. We could resize this graphic or resize the stage. Let's do resizing the stage, resizing the document. When we created the document, and I set up here, well, we have this template and it's got certain dimensions. We had a chance to change it, but we still can change it after the fact. So I want to resize this document so that this background properly fits. And we do it this way. Click on uh, your selection tool. Just click on an empty area of the document. And then switch to the properties panel. And remember, this properties panel changes based on what tool. So if you have it on the brush tool, it'll give you options for your brush. But what I want to do is change the whole document. So with the select tool, I clicked on the background to select the document. And then here now it says, here's your document. Here's the dimensions. So I want to change these dimensions so that that picture fits. So if I change that to 700 and press Enter, okay, it's getting bigger. I'm pressing 802. Okay, it's getting bigger. Try to find me a dimension width and height that encompasses the whole graphic. Try that out. I'm not going to tell you yet. Try to find some dimensions that make it fit. What do you think? What are some good dimensions that might fit our graphic properly? Now remember, you can also move your graphic around with the Move tool, Selection tool, that is. I'm going to go with 800 by 600. If you did more than that, that's fine. If you did it smaller than that, you're going to be cutting stuff off. And like this, anything that's outside of the stage is not actually going to be visible or part of your project. So you want to make sure that after you resize it to 800 by 600, Make sure also that the graphic is there on the stage, in the visible part of the stage, not outside. OK, so we've got a background. We've got a background graphic on its own layer. And when you get more complex and make more layers, you're going to lose track of layer 1, layer 2. What's, in li what's inside layer 7 again? So it's a good idea to rename your layers. Down here where you've got layer one, double click it, and let's rename it. What would be a good name of a layer for our background graphic? Background layer. Background. Background layer. BG, whatever you want it. Whatever makes sense for you to keep track of what's in these layers. Just double click the layer and name it what you want. Background, BG, whatever you'd like.
Okay, we're also going to do something like this for the photo one. It's often a good idea to have each element that is going to animate in its own layer. We saw that when we drew the face and then the hat, if they were on the same layer, they might intersect in a weird way and not be fully editable. So if there are things on separate layers, you usually get a better result. So I'm going to, I found it that it's good practice for myself to lock the layer that I'm not working with and then make a new layer. I'll call it photo one. And in the photo one layer, I want to drag and drop in the first photo. So from the library panel, photo one, drop it into photo one layer. Okay, so I put in this photo and like the idea is it's kind of a, be like a, a cool little slideshow, but it's sort of like putting the, the photos, like I'm putting the photos down like this, you know, I'm dropping them down like that. And right now if I drop something, it might not be perfectly straight, it's a little bit of an angle. Uh, what about if we kind of rotate that a little bit with the free transform or keyboard shortcut Q for quick transform? What if I rotate it a little bit, maybe shrink it? Just play with it for a moment, put one of the photos there, and not just perfectly straight there, just kind of move it around a little bit, rotate it, or shrink it, or whatever. Just put it there somewhere. Remember the arrow keys will also let you move it exactly where you want. Okay, we'll do this for photo two, and then we'll start to animate it. Add a new layer, photo two. Now, the names of these layers, you might call it capital letter, spaces, that's, that's perfectly fine. Um, when we get more advanced, when we get more advanced, we're going to talk about the importance of what you name these things, especially when we code things. And I would recommend to kind of get in the habit of keeping everything lowercase with no spaces. That'll be much more important later on when we add the code, but it's a good idea to start that practice early. And I'll drop in photo two, and then also put it somewhere on the stage, maybe rotate it, shrink it or something. Now, do you notice as you rotate this, it kind of like snaps into place every few degrees or something? You may or may not want that. Maybe you want it exactly at 45 degrees, or actually, no, I want it at 52 degrees. Well, this is kind of snapping where you might not want it. So there is an option of this tool uh, to be able to turn that on and off. Uh, my screen is a little smaller than yours, so some of my tools are getting cut off. Do you see that? Mine only goes down to that little eyedropper. I think yours goes down way more. So uh, this left side panel, you can grab the edge. You don't have to do this if you don't want, but let me show you this. If I grab this edge and pull it out over here, you know, it kind of puts the tools in a in two column view, one column view. And my screen, because it's a little more cut off than yours, I have to drag mine to two columns. Uh, and whoops, now I see so many more tools here that I, that I didn't see before. So this is optional for you. If you see all your tools there easily, then, then that's good. If you don't, you might st stretch it over. Well, this ability to snap is an option. The free transform is related to the move tool. And the, um, the move tool here lets us um, 
the, the free transform that is is different than the move tool in that it also lets us to, to rotate and shrink it and all of those things. So we've added the second photo. We're going to add the third photo in a moment. But there's no animation yet. Right now, our project, our slideshow just happens. And we have both images at once. I want to show the first image, and then a moment later, the second image, and then a moment later, maybe text, and then a moment later, maybe music. So I want animation. Animation is things changing on the screen, and nothing's changing just yet. To confirm this, at the very top right corner, we have test movie. We can't actually see it in action yet. So click on that test movie at the very top right corner, that little play button. It's going to prepare your project. It's then going to open it up in the web browser. And there's our slideshow. It's not sliding. It's showing everything at once. I want one to happen, then another to happen, and then like kind of a sequence or whatever. So we're going to be working in the web browser to to you know, work on the project, to prep it and such. But then um, we're going to press that test movie. And there's a keyboard short, shortcut for that that I'll tell you about soon. But we've got test movie to then actually see it, what it would look like for people. Um, when I showed you the examples of people's games, well, obviously, the soft you edit the game in the software, and then you test the project on the device. And right now it's testing it, it's showing it to you, or previewing it to you in the web browser. Well, I want to animate it. You may have seen a message down here, and this is totally normal. Warning, don't worry about it, just go back to timeline. We have timeline output. When we get to the advanced stuff of writing code, such as press a button to make a sound play, this output panel will give you feedback about what's what you did wrong and, and such. But right now, it's, it's just an over-eager over warning. It doesn't matter. So go back to timeline. And what we have here is uh, three layers with three keyframes. So a keyframe is like a sheet of paper that has some drawing on it. And I don't want both photos to appear at once. I want there to be a little bit of time where we see the first photo, and then the next photo appears. So notice we have frame 1, 5, 10, 15, frame 6, frame 19, whatever. Um, click one time on the photo 2 frame to select it, and then move it to frame 5. So we're going to see here that in this software it's it's very specific. Don't just click and move it, it might do something else. You have to click it to select it and then do something about it. So once again, I'm going to click it one time to select frame 1 photo 2 and then drag it to number 5. And what happens on screen, now we have this playhead right here where on frame 1, you see this, and then on frame 5, you see this. Click the test again to see what it looks like in the browser. And then close it as fast as you can, because that's annoying. Because then what happens is that. OK. So what's happening here is on frame 1, for 1 24th of a second, because we're running at 24 frames per second, for 1 24th of a second, we see these two images. And then a couple more frames happen, then we see that image. Because the animation ended, it loops back to the beginning. And then over and over, it loops for 5 frames. 24 frames per second means there are 24 frames. There are 24 drawings. There are 24 poses in one second. So when you're playing a, a game at 60 FPS, 
or your monitor is 120 FPS, you high roller, you are displaying 120 little drawings in one second. Uh, TV, TV shows uh, run at 30 frames per second. So every one second, 30 frames have passed of, of movement. And traditional animation, like classic movie, uh, classic animations, you know, Snow White and all of that, um, you know, uh, just about any sort of animation runs at 24 frames per second. So that means 24 little drawings for every second of time. That's why this looks like it suddenly passes so quickly. So what also happened, did you notice, is that it kind of like, it showed that and then it went blank and then it showed that. In between here, we have a keyframe with something and then we have frames with nothing and then we have another keyframe with something. So anything that is a filled in dot is a keyframe with content. Anything with an, with an empty dot is a keyframe with nothing. And then the things in between, these are plain old frames. So a keyframe is when something is visible, when something changes, and then a regular frame is nothing. Let's do this. Click on frame 5, photo 1, and then right click, insert frame. So on frame 5, of photo one layer, right click, insert frame. And then do the same thing for frame five, background layer, right click, insert frame. So this playhead right here shows that when your animation starts, we see this right away, and then for a few frames, we continue to see it. And then on a new frame, we see that. And then the animation loops. So if you play that, so those two layers that were visible for five frames are visible for five frames. And then this one that's visible for one frame is visible for one frame, and it just looks like it's blinking. I'm going to move the. Oops, just one thing, that was insert frame, uh, frame, not keyframe, frame, insert frame. I'm going to move the frame of photo 2 to frame 10. Remember, you have to click it one time to select it, and then drag it to 10. And I want both those photo 1 and background to be visible more time, so again, right click, insert frame, shortcut, F5 on the keyboard, or there's also an icon right over here, uh, insert, no that's a keyframe, uh, blank keyframe frame, we've also got it here, if you click and hold one of these icons, frame, I want to right click, insert frame, or start to memorize, F5 on the keyboard, and then for the background, F5, Right-click, Insert Frame. So we're displaying these two elements longer. Now 10 frames instead of just one frame so that it blinks. Test it again. So it's lasting slightly longer. Now let me do something very obvious. Don't do this, but watch this. What if I moved that frame all the way up to 45, and then on both of these I put F5. I'll do that in a moment, but I did it the quick way. Now when I see the result, I'm seeing that for 45 frames. I'm seeing it for more time. And then I'm seeing the final frame for 1 24th of a second and then it loops back to the beginning. Let me do one more thing, then, I'll, then we'll do it together. I want that to last longer. Again, we'll do this together one moment. Now watch what I do right here. Hmm. 
It's not blinking at the, you know, at the speed of light. It's there for a little bit longer. The idea is the more frames that I add to a keyframe, the longer it's visible. So when we had, you know, five frames in total, it just was blinking and blinking and blinking. It's just passing so fast. The more frames that I add, the more time that I add, the slower it is. So let me undo that so we can do this together. I want things to happen longer, to be visible longer. So I want, let's actually do this. I want to pause for one whole second to see the first photo before I see the second photo. 24 frames per second means that at frame 24, it's one second. If you look further on the timeline over here, there's a little marker for two seconds. At two seconds, it's 48 frames. 24 frames per second. 48 is two seconds. So you can think in terms of frames and seconds, and that'll be important as we go on. But for the moment, I said, I would like to see only the background and first photo for one second before I see the second photo. So I need to move, we need to move the photo two to where one second is, which is frame 24. And I want to continue to see the background and photo one until here. There's nothing here, so it's, it's gone, it's not visible. I start seeing it here, and I want to continue to see it until here. That's a key, that's a frame. And I want to continue that one to be visible into here. That's a frame. So click one time on that one, F5. Click one time on that one, F5. And so it added more time. Photo 2 is not visible. It's empty. That frame is empty. That layer is empty here. Until, one second. And then this is continuing to be visible. I want to display photo two for one second, one second more. One second past frame 24 is what frame? 24 plus 24, 48. I'm currently at 24. I add one more second, 24 frames per second, 48. Or again, if you don't, if you don't want to memorize the math or do the math, there are little markers right there. I want to go to two seconds. In total, I want to display one more second. I want to display photo two for one more second. So this time, on the photo one, right-click Insert Frame, or F5. Background in photo one stops being visible there. I don't want that. I want it to continue to be visible. So from here, F5, to here, F5. going to resize my screen just a little bit like that. Here's what you have here. Three layers. We have three keyframes. A keyframe is where something is visible, where there's a change. We have many frames. We have three keyframes. One, two, three. We have a blank keyframe. There's nothing there. And we have all of these frames. We have 48 frames in total on that layer, plus 48, plus 48. This is our animation so far, slideshow. Go ahead and save it, and then test it. I get in the habit of saving it and then testing it. So test movie right up there. Okay, here's our slideshow. We see the first photo for about one second. And then the next one appears, and that stays for about one second, and then it loops back to the beginning. Eventually, we will write code so that it stops at the end. But right now, we're not there yet. But here's our slideshow so far. We'll do that for the, th for the third photo in just a moment. 
does that kind of make sense? Any questions so far? We have these concepts of frames and keyframes. We have various layers. Does it make sense? Any questions? So we have our third photo. Now, notice what I'm doing here, because uh, I've got this smaller screen here. So sometimes I need to close these panels. Sometimes if you want to do that, you see you have this little double arrow. You can close the panel to see more of your stage or whatever. Um, you can also, um, there's some panels on the edge there that I haven't even looked at yet. Those can be opened up, but then now it takes up even more space. So I'm just kind of showing you can open and close these panels. You can even do that to the tools at the top over here. But let's say I want to pause and display the second photo for one more second until I see the third photo. Actually, let's make it really hard. Let's say we want the second photo to be visible for two seconds and then display the third photo. So doing animation does require a little bit of mathemizing, but this helps you here. So again, I want to display the current screen here for two seconds, and then I want to display the third photo. What frame number do I need to go to? Well, we could get the calculator out. Two times four. Sorry, two, I mean four times 24, 96. If I want four seconds of animation, Multiply that by my frame rate, my FPS. There's 24 frames per second in this project. 4 times 24, 96. So from the beginning, it's 96. But if I was already on frame 72, and I want to add 4 seconds, then I have to add from that point. Right now, we're at... Again, there's a little marker right here that helps you. You, you might not even need to know what, not, what frame it is, but there's a marker there. I want to pause for two seconds, so I, go, I need to go find... I need to go find where it says four seconds right there, 96. That's just what the calculator told me. So I want to display all of those frames until 96 frames, a.k.a. four seconds. I want to continue to display a frame that's adding. I want to continue to display a keyframe that's adding frames. F5 or right click, insert frame. Then at frame, at four seconds, frame 96, notice it also tells you right here what frame you're at. I'm at frame 96. That's, 96. that's not 96 degrees Fahrenheit. This is that frame 70. Here now, I want to add the third photo. So that was locking the layer, making a new layer, naming the layer, dropping the image into the layer, like before. So let's lock the layers, make the layer. Notice it automatically fills in all of the, it creates one blank keyframe, and it fills in all of these frames until your final frame. And then we need to rename it, call it photo two, or photo three. And here is something slightly different. If I then drop photo 3, so just to be, just to remember here, um, you got to be on the right frame, or the right layer, photo 3. You can then click on the stage, and then drop the photo in. There it is, yay! However, if I play it, It's visible the whole time. It's not doing what I thought it was telling it to do. I thought I wanted it to appear after the fourth second, after frame 96. It's appearing from the very beginning. Well, it did exactly what we told it. And this reminds us that computers are dumb. 
because I wanted something in my mind and what it did was something different. Look at the timeline here. The timeline shows background layer, start displaying the image all the way to the end. Photo one, start displaying the image all the way to the end. Photo two, show nothing until, fra until frame 24. Then there's a keyframe where it displays all the way to the end. And if I were to drop my photo into the third layer, it put it where the first blank keyframe is at, which is frame one. So it said, okay, great, you put it into the keyframe, but the only keyframe that's on that layer is back on frame one. We need a keyframe at frame 96. We need a place to hold the photo. Right now, the only place to hold it is the blank keyframe at frame one. So we go over to, so you want to undo it, you want to go to frame 96, right click, and then this time, insert blank keyframe. We want a placeholder, we want a place to add the next part of the animation, the next slideshow. So on frame 96, insert blank keyframe, and then drop the, the photo into that blank keyframe, and then you'll have it right there ready at the question. Go ahead and have a seat. We started at 1 o'clock. Okay, so just go have a seat over here. So insert blank keyframe. And now we've got an empty spot right over here where we can drop the photo that we need. And it won't go back to frame 1. It's right here on frame 96. So frame 96, drop the photo, resize it and such or rotate it, whatever you'd like. Okay, so that was, that was a little advanced. It's a, new, it's a new idea here. So on frame 96 here, you add your blank keyframe, and then add your photo. Question? So you added the blank All right, so I added the third photo, and it appears at the end, and if I test my movie, it looks amazing, right? I click on test. What happens is I see the first photo, the second photo, and then the, whoops. So what are we doing about that right there? So the third photo is uh, being displayed for a little while. We need to give it more time. So go ahead and give it more time at the end so that it's more visible. How about like one second more of animation? Right now, it's just visible on the very last frame and then it stops. So how about I want it to display one more second after that? So we need to go to wherever the marker is, five seconds, add more time, add more frames, F5, 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 F5 and F5. And now we've got more time that it's visible. It's not just one one twenty-fourth of a second. It's 24 full frames. It's one whole second. And then now the, the slideshow begins to display a little bit more coherently. It's not just things flashing on the screen. 
there's actually some time that happens in order for you to see what you need to see. So did that work there? Are you seeing the result of, of that slideshow? Okay, so if you've got it working at this point, you might say, well, if you go back to uh, animate here, I've got four different layers, and uh, maybe I'm going to add like five more photos. So uh, everyone, we're kind of getting there again. Anyone need a little help? We're kind of getting loud again over here. So um, we're having the same people over and over, kind of being a little noisy again. You know, like you have to say, you're distracting your classmates, you're distracting me. I hate to stop in the middle of class and reprimand the whole class if it's a couple of people that are having trouble. Uh, you know, we're here to help you, but please do it at a reasonable volume. I hope I don't have to do this every single class meeting. So. Here we've got photo one, two, and three, and I want to organize this because when we get more complex, when we have a project that has a character and uh, like a castle and uh, uh, like birds or whatever, they should all be in their own separate layers and organized, right? So we've got also here a way to make uh, folders to organize this. So what I want to do here is organize my project a little bit all photos will be tucked into a folder, and maybe like a sound is on a separate layer, or text is on a separate layer and such. So let's click right there to make a new, uh, a new folder. It's called Folder 1. Let's call this Pictures. So this folder is currently empty. What I want to do is move the various layers into the folder. So when you click and drag this photo into that layer, or into that uh, uh, folder, you see how it kind of indents? So click it and drag it. See how they all indent. And then when you cut the little triangle, they all open and close. This is just for a little bit of organization. This is going to be way more important once we get really complex, because all of the particular assets could be in, a, in its own particular layer, organized into folders. And a moment ago, when we created these layers, they were, weren't they 3, 2, 1? And now they went 1, 2, 3? That's not an issue right now. But depending on your animation, it could be a big issue, right? Like in the real world. If I've got this layer on top of this layer, and then these layers are on top of this layer, well, obviously, these ones on top are blocking the one at the bottom. And if this one is moved up over here, you see this one, and then these are blocked. That's what we're seeing here. So from top to bottom, this one is on top of this one, which blocks this one, which blocks this one. So obviously, these photos are blocked in the background. Right now, it doesn't really matter, maybe, what these orders are, because even if I rearrange the orders, it's still putting photos on the screen. But obviously, if you want to put it in the same order it was before, you can just drag them around. And that's right there. So the third image is above the second image, which is above the first image. So that was a little bit of organization there in layer folders. So it's visible for one second, then one second there, then there's a little pause for two seconds, and then the third image, and then it starts over. Does that make sense? Did you make your layer? folder to organize. 
So then you can just collapse it like that, and if you've got lots of layers to look at, um, it can be a little bit uh, cleaner to work with. So the last item that we can look at for today's lecture is um, this project doesn't look sparkly enough. Um, I want to, uh, now don't blame me, this is, this is what the book is wanting us to do. We're going to put little stars all over the place um, to like make it really you know, sparkly. So if we're going to add a brand new element, we should create a new layer, right? Let's lock the current layer. Let's create a new layer. Now, depending where your current selection is, when you make a new layer, it'll make it where you had currently selected. So if I had selected photo one and added a new layer, there it is. But I want a new layer that's outside of the folder. So I can obviously drag it if I want, but if you click one time uh, on, the, on the folder picture and then click layer, it goes outside. And whatever these numbers are right here, doesn't matter, mine's layer eight. If yours is three or four, whatever, it doesn't matter. Because we're gonna rename that to star. Let's rename, or stars, plural. So I have, I have a layer for stars, and I have a tool that can let me draw a star. Um, it's um, over here, the polystar tool. So click one time on that polystar tool. It's like a little, um, what is that, a, a hexagon shape. Click on the polystar tool. And then under Properties, at the bottom, number of sides, what type of style. This is a polygon. So you see here this Properties panel changes based on what tool you have. You know, we've said that already. And when we look at this Polystar tool at the bottom here, I don't want a polygon. I want a star. How many sides do I want on the star? And then maybe what color? On the left side, fill color, blue, red, yellow, whatever. And so I can draw some stars. Maybe change that to be, you know, four sides. Now, before you go too much further, I was drawing these stars on what frame? We made a new layer, but we didn't really notice what frame. And if I test this right now, it did exactly what we told it. Draw some stars. But they're visible the whole time. I don't want them to appear until the end, perhaps. So this did it again here. There, is, there was no um, keyframe for this to exist in, so it just put it on the, the first visible one. So I'm going to undo that. It might undo a few times. And we're getting to the same issue here. There was only one keyframe in the stars layer, but back on frame one. I don't want this to appear until the end over here somewhere. So we need to add a blank Keyframe. Uh, I'm going to do this at um, frame 100, just to see what that looks. That, that'll be a little different. We're going to have it that these photos appear until frame 4, or second to number 4, and then the stars, and then that's visible for a little bit of time. So right-click, insert, blank keyframe on frame 100. blank keyframe. Insert blank keyframe and then there 
at frame 100 in that blank keyframe, draw some stars. Whichever ones you want. And then now when you test it, those stars don't appear until approximately four seconds later, like that. Now obviously, on, on day one of the class, there's still plenty more to learn, much more advanced stuff than this, of course. When I showed you about the advanced animation, about the advanced games, that's a lot of effort there. And today is the most basic thing so far. So we're going to continue to talk about frames and layers and the various tools and all of that. But this was lesson one of the book. And it's mostly to get used to the software. You have to remember, what did I click on? What layer did I, did I work on? What, what am I doing what I think I'm doing? Because especially as a beginner, Adobe Animate is very complex. There's just so many different panels and things to click on, and it can be complex. So general questions on things we've done so far today? We're going to end the lecture at this point, where we will then have some lab time until 4.30 for you to practice this a little bit. This project that we did together here is leading directly into the assignment that's due on Sunday. The details of that assignment are on Canvas. So you want to log into Canvas to see exactly what you need to do. But you're going to do your version of this. You're going to create your own slideshow showing off pictures that you care about and making your own decisions about how much time does this is this visible. I didn't put any requirement about it. It's got to be 10 seconds long. You, I have requirements about how many pictures and stuff, but you can decide how long does this photo last, um, what else do I want to embellish onto it besides photos. So there's going to be a lot of open-ended aspects to these assignments. I'll give you these minimal things to do, and then you have to add more to it. And I do have to note that when you check these Canvas assignments, always check the rubric. Check that little screen that tells you exactly how you're going to be graded because then there's no ambiguity. Why did I get 9 out of 10? Well, if you check the little box, it shows there that you were missing one thing. And if I wrote it in the box, I am expecting that to be done in the assignment. If you did something else, but thinking that's, that'll be extra credit, well, unless it has extra credit noted, there's no extra credit. So make sure you, you, you just follow the rubric to, to know exactly the way to get the best grade. And this assignment's going to be due on Sunday, 11.55 PM, uploaded to Canvas. Questions? OK, so we're going to end the lecture at this point. This recording that I'm doing, I'm going to upload it to that address. I'll put the address up there in a moment. And you'll be able to replay the videos in case you need it.